you start doing it, you know, a dally. Oh. Wrap around now. No dish. Dogs the crawfish. Dogs the crawfish. Watch out for the big fish. You can't hold it. Have you watched those Nathan Walker, that one guy? You get two meat. It's those, oh, they're just going to be Here. He's here. He's he here. got him. Okay. Doc. Uh, you want to open this and then I'll do this? Yep. You ready? You ready? You ready? Finally, third time's a charm. Third. Yeah. Oh yeah. Got any thoughts on working it through, finally getting it through after all that? 
Determination? Yeah, determined. Grit? Doc was determined. Yeah, Doc was. I think he had plans this afternoon. He just didn't want to have to go back and take care of that. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. He said he's already destroyed your career. It's training. My brand new gate was gonna outlast. Not so much. Let's put a safety latch on that just in case. If you were talking to someone who was trying to start their own herd and having to work their own animals, what are some things that you've learned that could really help them with the prep work and the laying yeah. the foundation of what you and Kevin have been doing over the last couple of days to really make today a little bit easier and more successful than it was before? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, let me start off with Big Joe and then I'll yeah. come back to that. Am I good? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it, Doc, if it wasn't for Doc, I don't know what we would have really done. I think Kevin or my wife, Marissa, would have probably just made a stop at some point and quit messing with Big Joe. But, man, we were just persistent with him, and Doc was like, you, you've got to win. He said, you got two options. One, we can load him up in the trailer, or, uh, or you need to get him worked here. Those are your two options. You can't let him go at this point. And so, because, remember... Big Joe had never been through a squeeze chute. He'd never been really worked at all. And um, so he's about to be seven years old. He's a large animal and it's very difficult to kind of handle that situation. So we got him in there, he got out, got him back in. In the middle of all this, when we couldn't get him to go down the actual lane into the tub, I had hooked onto the gooseneck trailer back the the, tra the trailer up, getting ready to load him out. We're going to take him to Stratford. Well, by the time I got backed up, this is, I don't know, 20 minutes later, they had slowly got him into an area where he was. I guess he was tired of us by now. He was worn out. And he finally got him into an area where we could shut a gate and chain it where he couldn't get out. And then all of us together kind of, with Doc's ideas of using a panel to make him go straight. See, the problem is he's like a bucking bull. He gets in there and he's spinning around, backing around with those hips. He's fast. And uh, Doc came up with an idea and we made it happen and finally got him lined out, gave him a little poke in the butt and uh, got him to go down the, the alley into the holding areas, into the squeeze chute. Got his weight um, for the first time um, since I got him and uh, that was just super exciting. I think everybody was yelling. I'm yelling at my wife trying to get her to slam a gate <laughs> and uh, it was just exciting because everybody had known how difficult he was but you know Doc was Doc said you got to beat him. You've got to let him know who's the dominant um, today. Who's the dominant person today I guess whatever um, and so we won today. We, we defeated Big Joe. He's beat, he's beat me uh, twice now, um, but today we won. And so that's just the beginning of him. We've got to be able to keep doing that. He's going to test us again like he did today for 45 minutes or maybe an hour. But uh, we won at the end of the day, and I got his weight. I think it was 1,800 pounds, 1,880 or something like that, I, was, I think, what he weighed. Um, which I knew he was in the 1800 range or 2000. So that was awesome. We got his vaccinations done. We got his hair pulled. 
uh, to get him registered and I can find some genetics out about him. So a lot of good stuff happened today. Um, and then a lot of, you know, scary stuff happened today, um, especially working with him. And that kind of brings me into, uh, if you're getting into this, something that I've learned in my short three years of raising these guys, one is you got to have your own working facility. You can take them to a vet if you want. You're going to take risk of moving them back and forth in a trailer. I lost an animal my first year from getting uh, gored because uh, too tight in a trailer. I was taking them back and forth to the vet. After I lost that heifer, I stopped and we invested in a handling facility. Now it's taken two and a half years to build that over time because it is a process um, to adapt to these animals. And so, like I said, every time we work them, we learn from it. And then we remem remember how the situation happened and then we build off of that so that it doesn't happen again. Now, if I didn't have Big Joe, we probably didn't have to make so many adjustments. But because of who he is and how big he is, we have to beef up our system a lot. And uh, because we have to stay safe and we want to keep him safe. But if you're uh, uh, wanting to, to start raising bison and you're, you're interested in it, you, you really have to be serious because um, when you work with these animals, they, uh, they're great right now. And, and they're nice and calm and majestic. They're out here grazing and it's, it's great. But when you pin them up, that all changes. Yes, Doc was. I think he had plans this afternoon. He just didn't want to have to go back and take care of that. <laughs> yeah. I agree. No, he yeah. said he's already destroyed your corral. It's training. If you let him get away with it, man, I'm telling you, it takes years. Well, yeah.